Hi everyone, Nick from Emotion EV here again. Yes, so I'll admit it, I was making electric racing car noises, so you caught me out. So um, stay tuned, I'd like to give you an update on what I've been doing to the car. So I've um, removed the soft top and the uh, carpet covering the fuel tank. And not to mention the trim around the outside edge, just to keep everything nice and clean if I start to cut things with the grinding wheels or whatever. Um, so you can see there's quite a lot of space up here. And if I take off the uh, panel here, which I've just put back in for your benefit. There's the fuel tank. So... Uh, Remains to be seen how much uh, space underneath that there is. I think uh, actually quite a bit of distance down to the, to the subframe, the rear subframe there. And I'm uh, intending to mount the rear battery box directly onto the, uh, the back subframe. Moving into the rear, you can see that the uh, removal of that cover shows that there's quite a lot of space up either side of the fuel tank. And uh, I expect I'll be able to fit some something up in there, maybe the uh, vacuum pump over this side and uh, connect it up to the original fuel pump wiring so it'll come on with the car. I understand I might have to do a little bit of uh, tweaking to make it come on because apparently it's driven by the engine computer. So we'll just uh, bypass that and make it come on with the key instead. And so here we have it, the fuel tank's been removed and the subframe is still uh, hanging off on the ground at the moment but we'll get that back up there pretty shortly and uh, then I'll be able to see how much space is left down through the top of the fuel tank hole here down to where the subframe mounts. So it looks like we should have a good amount of space and I'm hoping that those cells, the CA100s, will sit underneath that scuttle height there and allow me to hide them completely. Up the front here I've been contemplating my options, what to do about power steering and the heating. So I've got myself the um, MES hot water system, same as Jack's got on the Mini Cooper. And I'm thinking that that's going to live quite nicely right up here at the front. The uh, nice straight run back to the original heater core up there. So the power steering pump mechanical obviously going to have to go. Um, I don't want to idle the car. I had originally in intended that I might but uh, after having driven a Tesla Roadster I've decided that uh, I really like that high regen feel and I want to replicate it as much as possible with this car. So we're going to go with the uh, good old MR2 power steering pump. Now thinking that this might um, fit nicely just up underneath this guard in the back of the front wheel here. So that'll allow me a fairly short run of hydraulics back to the original rack here. And uh, to necessitate that I um, made sure that when I bought the pump I got the original wiring loom and I've uh, got some extra cable and um, rewired those plugs up. So we'll uh, be able to run a very OEM looking connection back. Now uh, as far as where I'm going to power that from, we have this very handy high current 12 volt source right there that used to be attached to the starter motor. And that goes directly back to the battery, so uh, I might put a 12 volt fuse, high current fuse in before running the wiring off to the front power steering. I'm going to be mounting the MES hot water system up the front here, so allow easy access to that and the power steering. Um, so I'm going to have to pipe it back to the heater core up the back there. Uh, unfortunately what I note is that the hot water system is actually going to be lower than the outlet pipes up the top there so that probably means I'm going to have to add 
another little header tank up the top there just for for the fill and the expansion. This quite obviously is the gearbox and to adapt between the gearbox and the motor we need an adapter plate and of course you can buy them from our friends at Rebirth Auto or uh, something a little more simple from Canadian Electric Vehicles or you can make your own. Uh, a lot of people use billet aluminum however I've decided to uh, go a little step further and I'm actually casting one so uh, how do we do that? Well fortunately the Maata comes with a shim plate between the engine and the gearbox so it's quite a uh, simple matter just to put that on a digital readout on the lathe or mill sorry and uh, read off where all the holes come unfortunately there is only one dimension you can't get from that and that as we can see on the back of the, of the motor here is between these two dowel points and the center of the crankshaft so uh, I've done a little deal with my local machine shop and they're going to take this and clock it up on their CNC mill so um, to actually make the casting first step is we make a timber pattern and it's just like the real thing only 2% bigger because we have to account for the shrinkage of the material when we cast it so there's, this is a wooden pattern just made out of pine it's called a, uh, a loose pattern because it's not mounted on any boards or anything and the end result is this so we got uh, and my machinist has already skimmed off the back side and we're waiting for the uh, final dimensions to come through and um, I should be able to hand him this beautiful little piece of paper shortly with all the dimensions on for him to finish the machining. So here's the gearbox adapter belt bolted up to the uh, to the gearbox and you can see it's a pretty nice fit I think it's going to look pretty smart in the car and look quite uh, original equipment-ish but we've got a small problem up here in the left hand corner you can see the little the lug from the gearbox poking out the edge here so uh, that's the same problem that Beale had with his gearbox adapter from Rebirth Auto unfortunately it looks like the six-speed gearbox off this car doesn't quite match the five-speed gearbox off the car originally measured not to worry we'll uh, just tap that top hole to fit the bracket here and uh, we'll hide it behind some cables and stuff nobody will see so on Saturday morning I um, finally managed to get the old engine down to the machine shop and he's finally taken the last two dimensions I need for the dial positions on the on the mounting points so I'm finally going to be able to finish up the drawing and uh, send, the, send this casting off for final machining so the two points I was looking for were these dowel holes right here now uh, got to be quite careful because they don't actually line up with the center of the motor um, and another thing to watch out for is the magic number on this car so when you measure from the engine face to the front face of the crankshaft you get a measurement of exactly 15 millimeters what you've got to be careful of is that you've got to take off the 1.2 millimeters of the shim that goes between the gearbox and the motor so uh, the magic number is 13.8 uh, once again my workbench has exploded in a complete mess but uh, there I've got my final finished machined gearbox adapter so let's see how that fits in the car How about that? Absolutely perfect. So uh, I've done a bit of shopping and I've uh, found some automotive style flange head bolts and uh, once we get the flange head nuts to go with that's all gonna look absolutely perfect. Um, see I've got a, an extra tapped hole on the top here 
for connecting the earth strap. Look at that later. And uh, like I mentioned before, a tapped hole in the top corner here. And we'll mount the cable bracket on there. And nobody will see that little lug sticking out like I told you about before. And by the magic of video, uh, that's what it's going to look like before the motor gets mounted to it. So I've uh, got the weights now that the car's all been stripped out and we've got a rather interesting number of 818 there. And um, basically what I've done is I've uh, put in a few bits and pieces in the places where they might be in the car, like the, the electric power steering pump and the adapter plate and the clutch. And in the back I've got a, a 7 kilo weight to, to approximate the, uh, the charger. <laughs> and uh, I've already installed a opportunity charge plug there. So um, where, where does that leave us? Um, in the back, we've got uh, we've taken out 114 kilos in the rear. A lot of that from the exhaust pipe and the fuel tank. And in the front, I've cleared out. Uh, 165 kilos, which is the engine, cooling system, etc. Um, I'm just prototyping up a, a front cross member there, and mounting the hot water system. Uh, that's by no means a finished bracket there, so we'll, we're just mounting things to see how the space works out. Uh, as I mentioned on an earlier video, the cross member, well, the sway bar here, right in the middle turns out that the front face of the motor comes right in the middle of that bar. So if you have a look at the bracket up there, uh, we we'll may be able to drop that a couple of inches just to clear. And uh, we should be fine. So where the spirit level is currently spanning the engine bay, that's where it's going to have the, the front battery box. Uh, that's looking like about 75 kilos for 20 cells plus a bit of uh, maybe another 10 kilos for the actual box and framework. I'm likely going to attach it to the uh, engine, uh, the strap brace mounting points left and right there and use it as a kind of a, a box structure to make the replace the strut. The motor itself, uh, listed on the HPVS website, is about 150 pounds, so that's another 70 kilos. And I think the two controllers, I'm expecting 25 kilos for both of those, right up the front here. So we're we're rapidly losing the weight allowance up there, and I think. Um, that's going to add up to about 195-200 kilos so I'm actually going to be 35 kilos over at the front however in the back I should be just about bang on so um, hopefully we'll try and keep the weight to a minimum so I hope you've all enjoyed this uh, latest update so join me for the next episode where I'll take you through mounting the motor and uh, explain to you how I'm going to attach the, the flywheel and clutch. See you later. Bye bye.